after a challenging spring, I finally have plants growing in my vertical garden. Join me today as I show you how I garden in my green stocks. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott, and this is my green stock vertical garden. I've been growing in these vertical planters for three years now. First year, just a single tower. Second year, I added one more. And this year, I've added a third. Now, the plants that are growing in here have been started from seed in these two vertical planters and transplants in this one. I had a tough spring really, really cold, much colder than normal, lots and lots of rain, much wetter than normal. So it delayed my planting, but that's okay. I got everything going. The first thing I put in was this basil. This entire planter is basil, seven different varieties. I'm planning on making a lot of pesto. And the first thing I did a little bit different this year is how I'm labeling my plants. Now, in the past, and with most of this tower, I have plant tags identifying the plants at each level. And I typically grow the same plant all the way around on a level. But for these planters, I'm doing things a little bit differently. I'm using some of the labels that I got at the green stock site to identify what plants are growing. They have pre-printed labels and they have labels that you can mark on yourself. On this one, I went ahead and used the pre-printed basil label for the entire tower. And for these, I went ahead and used the vinyl labels that I could use a permanent marker on to identify everything that's growing within that particular vertical space. I'm often asked which is the better way to grow in your green stock, by sowing seeds or by putting transplants in. And as with any garden bed, it depends. It depends on the plants you're growing and it depends on the length of your growing season. Now, I wanted to get a head start with these basil plants. So I went ahead and started them indoors from seed and then laid out the pots of the seedlings around the tiers of this particular vertical planter. And then just like transplanting into any container or pot, I just used a trowel and dug a hole and placed the plants into that hole. Putting the soil back around it and gently firming in the soil for each of those plants. And the result is this basil tower. I've already harvested some of the plants and they'll continue to grow and give me harvest all the way to the end of my season. I started the plants in these vertical planters because of the types of plants that I'm growing. Plants like radish and lettuce and spinach and I've got carrots and soybeans. They grow quickly enough that I didn't need to get a head start. So I went ahead and sowed individual seeds in all the cells of each of these tiers. For some of the plants like radish, it's a relatively big seed and I was able to get pretty even spacing with those seeds. But with other plants like the lettuce, it's more difficult to get even spacing. So at this point, I've got quite a few lettuce plants that are beginning to grow pretty close together. So I can come in and thin out the lettuce as needed to give the remaining plants more room to grow. That's one thing that I think is often overlooked when growing in a vertical planter like this. You still have to manage the plants just like you would in an open raised bed or an in-ground garden. If the plants are growing too close together, you need to thin them out. And if you see that the space is filling up rapidly, it's better to do that thinning out earlier rather than later. When growing in any container, you should still take the regular precautions to protect your plants, just like you would in a larger bed. 
I had a big issue with rain, as I mentioned, and I also had hail this year. Well, I didn't want these young plants to be damaged. In my raised beds, I would put hoops and plastic covers over them to protect from those weather elements. Well, in my green stock, I do the same thing. Green stock makes a frost protection that can also double as a hail protection. When heavy rain threatened and when hail threatened, there was no problem. I just put the protection over the entire tower and the plants survived with no problems at all. Protection from garden pests is another problem that should not be ignored in a green stock. And there's no reason to. They also make an insect pest protection cover. And these young plants are susceptible to aphids and other insects that might want to eat them. So all I have to do is cover the entire tower. Now, both of these protections come with a zipper. And especially when the plants get bigger, it's a good idea to put this around the tower and then zip it closed. But while the plants are still small, I just go ahead and cover the whole thing with this cover. And now I can leave this in place while these plants continue to grow. The big difference between the pest protection and the frost protection is the material. And this material will let in up to 80% of the sun's rays so that these seedlings can continue to grow. But now none of those adult insect pests can get in and lay eggs and damage my plants. In my main garden for my plants that are growing vertically, I use trellises. Well, I do the same thing in a green stock. In a vertical garden, you need to have something to support the plants as they grow vertically. And so I have garden support in a bag. The green stock plant support system has interlocking pieces that allow me to go ahead and form these rings that can be supported at different levels of the tower. I think it's a good idea to put your taller growing plants at the bottom of the green stock. That's why I have my beans in these bottom two levels and I'll be adding these plant supports as the plants grow so that these will support the vining plants. You don't need them for carrots and radishes and spinach and lettuce. They're really only needed for those bigger plants. And because of the versatility of the green stock, you might want to be growing some of those bigger plants. Plant supports have worked pretty well for me. In an earlier video, I showed how I set up the automatic watering system for the green stock. And if you're interested in that, or the green stock or any of these accessories, check the link I have in the description below. I think the automatic watering works best once the plants are established and growing. Because of the design of the green stock, by filling the reservoir, you can ensure that the water is pretty evenly distributed all the way down. But when I'm starting from seed, I still like to hand water. In my dry, windy region, the soil dries out pretty quickly, even in a green stock. So I'll water the different levels when the seeds are growing, spin it, and keep the soil evenly moist until the seeds have germinated and the seedlings are growing. That's a big reason why I like the spinner, because it allows that to be done very easily. When it comes time to fertilize my plants, I'll go ahead and add a fertilizer to my watering can. In this case, I'm using fish emulsion for the basil. And I fill up the watering can. And then I pour all the fertilizer and water into the top reservoir. And this is a two gallon watering can, which will be enough to fill the entire reservoir. 
And as the reservoir fills, all of this fertilizer will flow down to each of the tiers below. And I can rest easy that all of my plants will be evenly fertilized. Just because you're growing in a green stock vertical planter doesn't mean you really need to change the way that you garden. You can still sow seeds or transplant the same way. You can still label your plants and put a trellis in place and take care of all the normal watering to include during the germination phase and the young seedling phase. You still need to think about fertilizer. These are all things that still need to be done in a green stock and as you can see, it really isn't that difficult. Now, if you want to see that video on the automatic watering system, go ahead and watch it here now. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening. <music>